As you they say, Alex here. Welcome back to learning more C++ from an unqualified person. Today, we are going to learn what is called the label. Now, here's a little bit of history about the label. When I first heard about the label, it was actually when I was learning assembly language, which is the lowest form of, com of computer coding that you could think of. Yeah, it's the lowest. Well, actually, machine code. Machine code is the lowest form, but we don't talk about machine code. So yes. Anyways, I learned about labels, and I thought, hey, that's cool. I wonder if C++ had them. Surprise, surprise, they did. So now I have to learn, relearn labels all over again. But now I finally relearned them, and holy heck, are they some of the best things I've ever heard of? My God, I they make programs so much easier, and I now use them in nearly every program I wrote, write. But what is this magical power that is the label? Well, let me introduce it to you. This is how you write a label. Mind-bending stuff, I know. So, the la so no semicolon at the end, obviously, since we have the colon right here. And this is the label's name. This can be anything, like option, uh, red, blue, ham, f, l. But for now, we are just going to call it, let's say, lay. We're just going to call it option. Because option is what I usually use for labels. So now we have an option label. But what do these labels do? They don't label code. You can't label code. So what exactly do labels do, you may be asking me. Well, I'll tell you what labels do. What you can do with labels is say, if I want to print out something, let's say... Let's say we made a code, a piece of code that required the user to input any number which is not below zero. We don't want the user to input anything below zero. And we want to give the user multiple chances if they input anything below zero, you know, because we're nice. So let's say, see out, enter a number which is zero or above. That's good coding. And then we can do like int x for a number and then c in the give it a value to x. So we ask the user for a, a value for x. Okay, that's good. Now if we use an if statement to check if x is less is less than zero, so if they didn't abide by our rules and decide to be a rebel, we can say something like c out a you cheated. And then we want to give them a second chance, so I'm going to be nice to say, here's a second chance. And now we need to get all the way back up to here, but how? The compiler can't just fly up over to here. That's impossible, right? Oh, this bad boy. We can use this label to tell the compiler, hey, let's go, go to that label and then start running from there, as if you've never seen any of this before. Well, of course, they've seen many of, many of this, but... They don't need to know that. So we'll simply tell the compiler, hey, go to my label. So now what the compiler will do, if it gets to here, we'll, it'll say, oh, so they want me to go to this label, eh? We'll simply teleport up here and then run everything down here. It won't do anything special. It'll just continue as if we started the program. And this option label won't do anything as we start the program since it's basically just a label saying, you should remember this, because we might be going back to this label. And then here we say, go back to that label. It's a simple code, so all you need is the label and the go-to. So now, if I simply, down here, let's say, um, else. Or well, better yeah, we don't need an else, since if, since if we pass that label, we can say, see out. You chose the X. It's the world's worst program, I know, but it's an easy one to make, so I'm doing it. So if I hit run now, and if I move the code over here. So now the compiler is here, which, and it wants a number, so let's enter something like 1. You chose 1. I forgot to add a space there, but okay. And you can see it didn't do this if statement, because obviously, 1, if you did basic math, 1 is above 0, and is not 0. If we input 0, same happens. Let's say we input minus one. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, okay. 
So what happened was we went into here, input that, output that, and then the go to, hit go to, and goes back up to here. Simple code. And now we get to do all of this again. And you can see that we can do that 50 times over. And then until we do that, which is, uh, which is, ends the program, obviously. So that's how we can use labels. One last thing about labels, um, labels cannot have the same name or else it breaks, at least not in the same scope. And scope also, the variable scope applies to labels as well. So if we had a label inside another function, we cannot call it from, if we had a label inside one function, we cannot call it from another function because that's called out of scope and the compiler will scream at it'll scream at you until you solve it and yeah that's actually all so a nice simple tutorial but it teaches you but i taught you something incredibly powerful and you should consider learning it about how to effectively use labels along with another thing that i'll be teaching you in a bit and how you can make your code a lot better so yeah, that's all. Uh, subscribe to me if you want to see more coding videos like this. And if you like this coding video or you learned something new, you can like this video. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.